Praise the Lord. I'm going to be reading Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us and not we ourselves. We are his people yeah. and the sheep of his pasture. Yeah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, yes. and his truth endure to all generations. I have read Psalms 100, verse 1 through 5. May the Lord have a blessing and read of his word. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. As we bow our heads. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, yes. in the name of Jesus, we do thank you for another day of your mercy and another day of your grace. If it had not been for you on our side, yes. tell me where would we be? Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Where's your blessings and where's your comfort upon this family of Norrell, John, Jerome, yes. Kinsley, Sr.? Lord, remember his mother remembers his children, remembers his sisters and brothers, remembers his uncles and aunties, yes, remembers his nieces and nephews, yes, remember his cousins, remember, oh God, his friends and acquaintances. Lord, we thank you for the life. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because we know that you are a God yes. that sees and knows and cares. And we pray, oh God, that your presence will come into this house and that you would Hallelujah. Meet every need, Lord, every need. according to that need. Lord Jesus, hallelujah to God. Let your word, hallelujah, fall on good ground today, Lord, that it may bring forth fruit, meat for the master's use. Help us all, Lord Jesus, hallelujah to God, to be more compassionate. Amen. Help us all yeah. to be more loving. Amen. Help us all, oh God, yeah. hallelujah to God, yeah. to be more caring. Yes, about Lord. one another, oh yeah. God. Lord, we know you can do exceedingly and abundantly mm -hmm. above all we might yeah. think or ask. So we ask you now, Lord Jesus, to come into this room. Yes. Hallelujah to God. Yes. We ask you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, to prepare hearts yes. to receive your word on good ground. Yes. And we'll give you praise. Yes. We'll give you glory. Yes. And we'll give you honor. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. All the people said, Amen. 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 Praise our God. God. Thank you so much. Program now calls for acknowledgments. Certainly, on behalf of the family, they would have me to express to each of you their deepest appreciation for all acts of kindness and expressions of sympathy that's been demonstrated shown to them during this their time of bereavement you sent them flower and you called if you came by whatever you did if you just thought about them and prayed for them again they would have me to say to you may God's richest blessings be upon each of you and thank you so much the yeah. family. church paper from St. Stephen's Church October 16, 2021. Our final destination is a place filled with love, His majesty, and grace. Today we celebrate the life of a loved one who has gone before us, the race he has won. His journey has now ended. His spirit has ascended, claiming the great reward with Jesus our Lord. We, the members of the St. Stephen's Baptist Church, extend our condolences deepest sympathy to the family and the loved ones of Mr. John Tinsley. Words are never enough to fully convey our concern. But during this sad and difficult time, please know that you are in our thoughts and prayers. To our dearest member, Sister Pearl Patterson, 
and the entire Tinsley found friends and family. Please know that your St. Stephen's Baptist Church family is here for you. We're just a phone call away. We pray that your grief will be replaced with sweet memories that you feel and comfort the presence of the Lord. Be encouraged, family, through the word of God, as it is written, 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. And finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Respectfully submitted by the St. Stephen's Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby, Pastor, Deacon Michelle Murphy, Staff Administrator. Amen. Amen. This time we ask that you would turn now to the obituary portion of your program. We want to read it silently, accompanied by soft music. set of circumstances that you and I will ever be faced with in life 
and certainly death is no exception. I want you to understand that death has its way of taking away from us the physical presence of our loved one. What death can't take away is the loving and fond memories yeah, yeah, yeah. that we have of All our right, loved right. one. And I encourage you today, family, to hold a very special place for John. Amen. In the library of your memory. Amen. I want to, I want to just try to help you and uh, encourage you today in the midst of your, your brokenness and your tears and your sadness. I don't tell you don't cry. It's natural and it's normal. But I will tell you, as Paul said to the church at Thessalonica, weep but not as those who have no hope. Cry, but don't cry hopeless tears. Didn't know John personally, but when I read the record, he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. So he was saved. And so there are some, there's an assurance that comes along with being saved. That assurance is, is that we didn't lose it. Anything lost, you don't know where it is. We can be assured, according to the word of God, the Bible says absent from body. is to be present with the Lord. So again, leave here knowing and rejoicing in the fact that John now is in the presence of the Lord. Let me put it in perspective for you. Watch this. Here's a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse number one. Listen to what Paul shares with the saints at Corinth. I pray that this blesses you as much as it blessed me. Listen to what he says. He says, for we know. What do you know? That if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hand eternal in the heaven. I, I want to submit and suggest this to you today, family, and uh, is that what has taken place is that John has moved. He's moved. He's got another address. He doesn't have a physical or earthly address anymore. He's got a heavenly address. All right. All right. And I pray that this brings some sense of comfort to you in the midst of your sadness. Yes. It's knowing that for those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ, as Savior and Lord, we can be assured, amen, that we have a heavenly, a heavenly home. A heavenly home. Here it is. Very simply. What Paul does here is he shares with the saints at Thessalon, at the saints at Corinth, is he in this one verse, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, he deals with two, two matters that I want to point out to you, and then we'll go down from this place. Two things in this one verse. The first thing he deals with is he deals with a human problem. The first portion of the verse. He deals with a human problem. Listen to what he says. He says, for we know. This word know in the original Greek, it means uh, for certain. It means uh, without a doubt. In other words, it, it doesn't carry the idea or the implication of hearsay or second-handed information. Paul here says, we know. What is it that you know, Paul? He says, we know we're living in a earthly tabernacle. All right. 
this word tabernacle in the original Greek, skenos, skenos is the Greek word. It literally means tent. Paul here talks about, we know that we're living in a earthly tent. That's the human problem. Living with earthly tent. And it, it becomes problematic. But there's no way that we can escape it. The only way you can escape it is not be born, and it's too late for that. You got to deal with some problems that come as a result of just being born. Sometimes we get sick. Sometimes there are things that happen that we don't control. All of that's just life and, and being human. We got to deal with this stuff. And Paul is saying to us that sometimes in life, in life you got some problems that you have to deal with. Sometimes you don't ask for them, but you still have to deal with them. Now watch this. Here it is. Here it is. He says, we know that we live in an earthly tent. If you've ever gone camping and you pitch the tent, you know that a tent is not a permanent dwelling place. Yeah. Yeah. At best, a tent is a temporary dwelling place. Yeah. When it's hot outside, it's hot in the tent. Yeah. It's cold outside, it's cold in the tent. Yeah. It rains outside, water gets in the tent. The tent, and the longer that tent, you pitch that tent, the more, and the longer you, you pitch the tent, the more likely something's going to happen to the tent. And I say that to say, the longer you stay here, something's going to happen to your tent. Because all of us, he said, we know for certain we are living in a tent. All of us are living in tents. I know for me, I'm taking medicine now that one time I used to not have to take. Yeah, I just got, got some problems with the tent. Amen. High blood pressure, sugar diabetes. Etc. That just means you're living in a tent and it's problematic. Stuff happens to your tent. That's the truth. And if my grandmother was here today, my grandmother was, she would probably strike out on a song and start singing something like, It's a leak in this old baby. And my soul has got to move. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what happens when you're living in a tent. One day you have to understand that we all one day are going to have to fold up. Yeah. Like it or not, the mystery is, I don't know when it is. I'm going to have to fold up my tent. But the truth is, I'm living in a tent. And one day I'm going to have to fold my tent up. That's the truth. I'm done. But here it is. The sad second principle in this same verse. The first thing he deals with is the human problem. And as long as you live, you're going to have some problems. Oh, yeah. And you're going to have some problems with your tent. Right. Fix your tent up. Make it look real cute. <laughs> look real nice. But it doesn't negate the fact that that old tent is deteriorating. Yeah, that's right. Are you listening to me? Yeah. yeah, I looked at myself this morning. I remember I used to have a whole lot of hair that was all black. <laughs> all something happening to my tent. <laughs> You should not need glasses. Yeah. Something happening to Am I the only one in here? No. Something happening yeah. to my tent. Yeah. Living in a tent. And one day I'm going to have to fold up my tent. But not only that. He gives us something more encouraging. I don't want to leave you. Just on some sorrowful and sad note. Reminding you about you living in a tent. But I do want you to keep that reality in mind. As you start dealing with some stuff with your tent. Are you listening to me? But listen to what else he does. He gives us not only the human problem, but in the last portion of the verse, he gives us a heavenly promise. Yeah. Hallelujah to the heaven of God. And I thank God that John had that heavenly promise. He had some issues he had to deal with in life, but then he had, he had the heavenly promise. Yes. The heavenly promise. What's the promise? He says, in the text it says, we have a building okay. of God, a house not made with hand. Where is it? Eternal in the heavens. Yeah. It's not in, on earth. This new building, this new tent, this new place that we have has not been tainted. 
by the corrupt hands of man, but it's eternal in the heaven. I want you today, family, to find some peace and joy beyond your tears and knowing that that's the place now where John is. He's in a place now of no more. No more sickness, sadness, suffering, sorrow. No more issues. He's in a better place today. And I pray to God today that if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the free pardon of your sins, that you will get to know him. Yeah. So that when you got to fold up your old tent, you can be assured that you have a permanent home All right. Thank you, Jesus. eternal yeah. in the heavens. God bless you today, family. I encourage you today to stay together, to stick together. One of the greatest blessings that God has given you outside of his son, Jesus Christ, is the gift of family. Yes, sir. And guess what? You didn't get to pick your family. Yeah. That's right. I know it's some folk in the family you wish you were kin to, but too late for that. You don't have no control over it. Amen. You got to love on me now. Hallelujah to the name of God. Amen. So I encourage you to love one another, check on one another. Amen. Every now and then, just pick up the phone, text, call. Amen. Just, I didn't want nothing. Just think about you. I love you. We family. You good, fam? Just check on them. Let them know that you love them. Finally, my parting words is this to you. Remember, I told you this if you don't remember nothing else. 100% of people die. <laughs> What's your odds? They put good. Unless you rapture up when Jesus comes back, we die. We are dying. We are getting closer to folding up our tent. Make sure you know Jesus Christ That's right. before you have to fold up Amen. your tent. Amen. The mortician's are coming. The mortician's are coming. The mortician's are coming. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Again, my name is Daryl Nathan. I'm pastor of the Mount Zion Baptist Church located at 1472 Dixie Highway in Louisville and also pastor the Gilded Edge Baptist Church at 1713 D.L. Miley Jr. Way in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Myself and both congregations will pray for you that God will continue to bless you and strengthen you. Not only today, but tomorrow and tomorrow's tomorrow. For as much as it has pleased the Almighty God in His wise providence, take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Look into the general resurrection in the last day when the Lord, the righteous judge, shall come back again and judge the quick and the dead. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Would you stand now for final prayer and benediction today? If you're able to stand, if you can, you can see it. If you're able to stand, stand with me. Let's continue to pray for this family. God will continue to cover them. God will continue to keep them. Not only today, but tomorrow and tomorrow's tomorrow. God, how we love and thank you today. Thank you, God, for the life, the love, the laughter, the legacy of John. God, we commend them now to your presence. We thank you, God, for God loaning him to the family and this community for these years. We understand, God, that John did not belong to any of us, but he belonged to you. That's right. And so today, God, we just bow in humble submission of your will. And we say to you, God, we're not angry, bad, or upset with you, but we vow to praise you in the midst of our pain and sadness and grief. Pray, God, for this family. That you will strengthen them. God bless and keep them. The children, the mother, the father, God. Sisters and brothers, God bless them now, God, as only you can. Remind them, God, today that your word is true. You promised us that you would never leave us, neither would you forsake us. Thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, God, that John's in a better place today.
celebrate and appreciate you. Forgive us of our sins. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of you henceforth, now and forevermore. Let every heart say, Amen. God bless you. Ends our services. Go in peace. God bless you. I love you.